Yo, what well, go on internet, Kyle Linux there. First things first, give thanks to uh, Keep It Techie for sharing my no internet distractions video with his audience. Keep It Techie is an IT focused and Linux centric channel here on YouTube. I uh, highly recommend checking out his videos, particularly if you're interested in getting on any certification paths. He covers a wide array of different technology related subjects, but with an emphasis uh, on Linux. So again, big up. Keep it techie. Thanks, man. Appreciate the, uh, the shout out. Now, this video is a follow up to the no internet distractions video and by extension, the content filtering video I'd done some time back. I noticed that I was having some issues with the DNS settings that I added to my um, network manager here on this machine. So my ThinkPad T440S. I'm not currently at home, so I haven't been able to use my desktop, uh, hence the large gap between videos. <laughs> Um, I'm actually visiting family right now, so I'm trying to make do with my ThinkPad to put some content up online. Um, but I noticed that my filtering that I had set up um, seems to break every so often. And my network manager will go from using the clean browsing DNS that I had set up, those name servers, and then switching over to uh, Google's name servers from the uh, Google DNS um, service that exists. And I learned that this is a result of Doxel um, and Docker on my local machine. I'm using Doxel to manage a Drupal project that I've been working on, a Drupal 8 project. And I had no idea that that thing actively um, overrides whatever your current network settings are. So I wanted to figure out how to stop that. Now, this video isn't necessarily just for folks who have Doxel or Docker on their machines. This is for pretty much everybody. Just some places to look to if you notice that you're having some issues um, having your host file respected and also your name servers that you set up for content filtering also respected um, by your network. I also noticed that Doxel, the same deal, it, it's bypassing my um, host file where, I, again, I'm using Stephen Black's host file from uh, GitHub, and it totally ignores that. Like Doxel just goes right past that. So um, there's, a way to, there's a way to remedy this. So again, if you are having these issues, whether you're using um, containers on your machine or some kind of virtual machines, maybe like Vagrant or Ansible or something like that, if you're running into, or again, Docker, if you're running into any issues, oh, Kubernetes is another one, um, this could be beneficial to you. And if you're not using any um, containerization software or solutions, uh, this could also be a benefit to you because it can show you where some of these gotchas might exist. So let's jump into it. First things first, I'm going to stop all my Docker services. So we're going to sudo system control. Um, what is it? Stop Docker dot service. And then the next one is um, sudo system control stop Docker dot socket. Okay, so those two are out of the way. Um, Docker should no longer be running in the background. You can also fully disable Docker, like entirely from starting with your system whenever you reboot. And the way you do that, same deal, um, just hit up on your keyboard. You'll get what you previously um, submitted to Terminal to pop back up. And then what you do here is just change stop to disable. And that service will no longer start up with your machine. Um, we're also going to disable the service entirely. That's it. All right. Cool. Um, now, granted, you know, keep in mind, this is if you have system D on your machine. I'm using Zubuntu 20.04. So system D is here by default. If you're using something else, I cannot help you right now. <laughs> you know, check out uh, Stack Overflow. All right. Now that that's done, the next place you'd want to look is um, Etsy nsswitch.conf. And the nsswitch.com file is the name service switch config file. And the way that this thing is, you know, according to the man pages, it's, uh, the, it's, it's used by the GNU C library to get name service information in a range of categories and also in a, spe a specified order. 
the file is separated into spaced or tabbed columns where the first column is related to a database name. So let's take a look at it while I'm explaining it. So um, pseudovim, let's see. All right. So yeah, so the file is separated into spaced or tabbed columns. First columns related to the database name. So we have password, group, shadow, G shadow, etc. We're focused on hosts and networks here, right? For our purposes, these are the two. These are these are the two um, two bad boys here, right? Um, so first column, database names, and then all the following columns will be uh, the sources to queries. So whether they're actions or just specific services. In our particular situation here, these aren't going to be actions, right? These are the services, the files, and then DNS. So what I want my host database to do is check for its information from files, i.e. the host file in this instance, and then my DNS settings, um, that, which I believe are handled by resolve.conf. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe nsswitch.conf also checks the resolver for information and then the resolver gets its information from resolve.com so um, I, don't quote me on that i could be misunderstanding that but that from my limited understanding that's that's how i get that they're connected um but i will go look that up for confirmation leave a comment below if i have that entirely wrong <laughs> um and then uh, under networks um the network's gonna check files as well and i'm start. i'm wondering if i should actually add dns to this so anyway let's let's uh jump into it so host for me I already have it set for files and DNS, and I'm actually going to add DNS down here for networks as well. Just out of curiosity, because I want to see what, what will end up happening. And now I'm going to save this file. Now from here, you would actually restart your network manager service, but we're going to not do that um, because we have a couple more changes to make, and then we're going to reboot the machine anyway, so don't worry yourself about that currently. So the next thing we're going to do is add some name servers to um, Etsy resolve.conf. And this is, I think this is the main piece that resolves a lot of the issues. So resolve.conf again is the resolver configuration file. And the resolver is the set of routines that the C library um, uses to access DNS. So if you configure resolve.conf, then before those routines are like fully performed, they're going to query the settings in resolve.conf in our situation, the name servers we provide before they perform those routines and thus access the web. So let's check out resolve.conf. So we're going to do sudo them. All right. So now we're in resolve.conf. Now from here, what I would do is add in the name servers that I want my machine to use when accessing the internet. So I have the two name servers provided by clean browsing here. So the first one we're going to use name server equals, and then I believe it's 185.228. Uh, Oops, sorry. There's no equal sign. I don't know why I typed that. <laughs> it's name server space. And then you type in the IP address and then same deal for the second name server, which in this case is 185.228.169.168. All right. And then now we can write and then quit. Okay. So resolve.conf has been updated again. We could restart the uh, network manager right now, but I want to reboot the machine. But before we reboot, this is very important. Something to note about resolve.conf. This thing will be overridden every time you restart your your machine, whether it be a laptop or a desktop, whatever. Every time the Linux OS reboots, resolve.conf gets overridden and you are dealing with whatever network manager chose to use by default. The way to eliminate this, and I I know I might get some flack for doing this, but you can use um, Chatter, also known as change attribute, to prevent this file from being overwritten. So let's try that real quick. Now Chatter again is change attribute. You can change the attribute of a particular Linux file within the file system. and in our for our purposes we want to prevent files from being modified or deleted 
the way we do that is with the I attribute. So we do sudo chatter plus I. So uh, basically we're adding this attribute to and it's going to be, of course, resolve.conf. Okay, done. Now it cannot be edited. I don't even think this can be edited by the super user when you do that in order to allow the uh, super user to be able to have access to be able to edit and um, even undo this, you'd have to add the a attribute, um, which allows you to append the resolve.com file, but we're not doing that right now. So that's a little tidbit for you if you want to bypass this at any point in the future. Now that that's been applied. And again, it might not be the correct or best way to prevent resolve.com from being overwritten. Um, definitely post all the alternatives in the comments below because I'm sure it'll help somebody out. I also recommend that you apply the same treatment. So change attribute to your host file as well. Some people might not agree with this, but this is for the folks out there who I mentioned in the previous video have any self-control issues, right? Like if you set up your host file and you find that you're turning any uh, domains off very frequently like things that you know if you're like i don't want to use game facts anymore or i don't want to be on youtube so much as i normally am and then and then a week later you're like oh i gotta go on game facts and i need to go on youtube and you find yourself updating your host file um this might help you this might be a nice little roadblock to prevent you from doing that so i'm gonna do it right now um so let's see let me actually see what my host file is looking like i haven't checked this in a bit oh whoops There we go. All right. No, I think I'm good. I think I left everything. Yeah, everything from Stephen Black's host file by default is in here. So I think I'm good to go. All right. That said, same treatment. So sudo change attribute plus I and then Etsy and in this case host. I haven't done this before. This this one's new, so we're going to see if something breaks completely. All right, so that's done. Last thing that you should do before rebooting the machine, head up into your NM applet if you have it available. Um, if you do not have a panel, you can go or, you know, if you if you don't have a panel, but you have terminal open or if you have D menu, you can do um, NM connector uh, connection editor. Same deal, right? Go into that, and as you can see, hey, look, these are those Docker networks. I wonder why they're still up when I stop the Docker service from running. We'll figure that out later. <laughs> um, this is the current Wi-Fi that we're on. So I'm going to go into my IPv4 settings, and I'm going to change the method. I didn't mention this in the last video, and I, I completely forgot um, something important here. The method is very significant. You want to change your method to automatic DHCP addresses only. This way, these required IB, uh, IPv4 um, addresses that you place here in the DNS server's input box, um, if, if they're not cleared, you're not going to get on the internet, right? This is where we want this thing to be mandatory. So uh, we're going to place in the IP addresses that we had on here before. And because I'm lazy and I don't feel like typing them out, we're just going to copy and paste. So just type them in, add your comma, and then make sure you check this require IPv4 addressing for this connection to complete box. Make sure you check that box. Again, make sure your method is set to automatic DHCP addresses only, and then you're just gonna click save. And you can do this for all the networks that you connect to. So if there are other Wi-Fi networks you connect to or any wired connections, same deal. So that's done. Now we can finally reboot the machine. And when we reboot, uh, we should have everything blocked out completely. So let's give that a shot now. Be right back. All right, so we've rebooted and we are back. And we're going to fire up Firefox, no pun intended, and see what happens when we try to access one of those sites that I would normally have blocked via my host file or via clean browsing.
Oh, there it is. So Reddit's not working. And I think that's all I need to know. But let's let's take it a step further. Let's check out YouTube real quick. So uh youtube.com. So I noticed that there are some YouTube channels that don't have um any videos available due to clean browsing. Some channels that I typically watch. So Linux Gamecast, I know that the Linux Gamecast videos so that particular podcast, those videos don't come up, but Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays do. And I think it's because of the content. The Linux Gamecast videos, um, they're, they're mature rated. And then Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays is for general audiences. So let's make sure that clean browsing is working. Apologies for any like water sounds in the background. Wife is in the shower. Um, okay, yeah, so here we go. Some results have been removed because restricted mode is enabled by your network administrator. And then, oh, I didn't know that they had reviews set up like that. Oh, see, and it's showing their older stuff here. So if I click on Linux Gamecast, yeah, so you see, let me go down to uploads. It's not even showing the um, Linux Gamecast podcast playlist. So, yeah. So, it's working, basically. I'm sure if I were to go to go to their website directly. Now, if I attempt to play one of their podcast videos from LGC Weekly. There we go. All right. So, we'll, we'll pick uh, episode 420. And if I hit play, I'm pretty confident it won't play. Yeah, video unavailable. Video is restricted. So there you go. So there's your proof that clean browsing is currently working. So again, try those steps that we laid out in the video here and um, see if that helps you. Keep your filtering settings on at all times. Um, I think that's about it. Can't really cover anything else. Uh, so yeah, with all that being said, this has been Kai Linux. Um, I hope that I hope this has been helpful for you. You know, if, if it was, let me know. Um, and again, if there are alternative methods for doing what I've laid out in this video, please leave them in the comments because it'll help other people learn other ways of doing things. It'll also help me as well. If there are mistakes that I've made here as well, definitely leave the corrections in the comments because that will enable me to learn more. I'm still trying to learn as much about Linux as I can, so continue helping me to help you to help each other <laughs> all right so with all that being said this has been kai linux and remember no matter what destroy you use out of many one linux we give thanks peace